I'm the Commissar, this is Forged Alliance Forever, and you'll need some two against two action in your life. We have here four players, two on two ladder, on the map White Fire. Now White Fire is a very old map, I think it's been around since the beginning, and we'll talk about it in a bit. But first, this is an interesting one in that it's an all UEF matchup. So we have the red, the white fire, and the blue. And that works for quite a lot of countries, to be honest. It works for England, it works for the USA, it works for France. And you can decide which Tricolor is being represented here by the game's title. Either way, let's go and meet them, starting with the red. Down here, in the corner behind the island, we have the Zeitencraft. He is 1587 rated, and he is in bright red. His ally on the flank is Bodexius, 1201 rated, in Burgundy. In the rear position for the coal team, we have Balfron, 1388 rated, in baby blue. And last but by no means the least, this chappy here is Carl, who is 1341 rated, and he's in dark blue. Now, white fire. First thing to notice about it is that there are T3 Eon Naval Factory wrecks, it, one for each of the four players when you're on 2v2 mode, and Balfon has already got that engineer, who you can see hiding inside the wreck there, eating it up. And good sight is sower, but he's on his way. And there are also these boat wrecks scattered around the coastlines and a lot of these icy rocks. So this map is full of reclaim. Now, when this map was originally most seen, it was seen as a 3v3 back in the day with, as you can see, there's an expansion there, which is in fact a starting position on each island. And I expect the rear players in Watchwood in a 3v3 definitely be the air position, Balfron and Gethysencraft, to be expanding to these and trying to capitalize on them quite soon. Now, all the OEF, what does that mean? Well, that means that the first thing I expect to see is heaps and heaps and heaps. Well, the T2 thing I expect to see is heaps of missile cruisers. Because missile cruisers and shield boats, everything, everything is in range of being missiled by cruisers on this map. And so naval control is going to be insanely important. If it were maybe like only Eon, then sure, it would still be important, but you might be able to hide at the back somewhere here. Nowhere to hide, because everything is missile cruiser o'clock. And I've also seen this played 1v1, in which case the important thing to do was to drop across. You'd start here, and then you'd try and drop across and steal this expansion from your opponent, but you can't do that here. So, we're, But these islands are quite exposed so there's quite a lot of potential to try and get some sneaky drops in we'll see if that happens and our first scouting mission is out it's coming out from katite and he wants to see what's going on in the base of car who hasn't uh, who's only at that very second finished his air factory and balfron hasn't even built an air factory so, a hot team definitely ahead in the air game. Can they take advantage of it? An early bomber would be very nice. This map is only 10k, it's quite small. The bomber can get across it very fast. And picking off these engineers for Balfron, where they need time to be reinforced back from the main base, that could be brutal. But, it looks like Bodexius is planning a still more aggressive move than just a bomber. He is dropping some engineers first here and then here trying to snaffle all of the reclaim for Balfon. so this is going to be picked up this well this one is already being picked up but look at this beautiful response from Balfon. sure he's going to lose about half of this boat but these engineers are just being straight up eaten by Balfour's engineer, and he's still going to keep half that boat, and on this side, exactly the same thing's happened. It's just dropped, and then it's been reclaimed and shot up by Balfour's sub. 
So that early drop from Bodexius, very easily countered by Balfron, in an excellent display of engineer work, props to him. And of course, that took quite a lot of eco at this very early in the stage in the game, before five minutes, for Bodexius to send out. And Gatsight has also been very early in getting out Navy. Carl has a bomber, which will defend against this. But, and Carl also has a torpedo defense, helping out his, and a frigate, helping out his bomber. So he ha is definitely going to be able to see off Gatsight's frigate without a problem. He's also sent a sub to try and do a bit of damage, and this reclaiming engineer, which has taken about two-thirds of the naval yard so far, might be a casualty, as Katsai doesn't have anything that can take out submarine stuff. But it looks like Carl isn't going for the engineer, he's leaving it, and he's going to try and hit the naval production directly. And Gatelite just has no answer to this sub. That engineer has been taken out. And Carr is bringing in a frigate as well to help out. The com could reclaim the sub, but this is quite a lot of effort for Gatelite to have to go to to defend against a relatively small raid. And he's trying to put up a torpedo defense, but the frigate and sub between them just take it out. Bombers coming in for the frigate. But this is excellent damage for just these two units. It's sealed up a lot, it's taken out a lot of eco, it's forcing the site to react pretty hard. And the site has finally cleaned it up, but at what cost? On the other side, Balfron is sending subs, and Bodexius has an awful lot of production, but very few units actually ready in defence. And this bomber... Oof! Ouch! Look at that! Six engineer kills! That is pretty brutal. It does get picked up by this flight of interceptors, but it does mean that Balfron, uh, Balfron is not going to be worried about this top launcher, which is being destroyed faster than the com, who's the only engineer left, is putting it up. And Balfron has created, um, Balfron Bodexius has created some units, and it looks like Balfron is just choosing to retreat, but that was a nice little raid from Balfron as well. Now, what have we got? Carl has managed to shoot out a couple of good sites mixes on the island, which is pretty nice. And he's coming around here, and he's always got a th another one as well. But I think that this navy here from good site is going to be enough to hold Carl back for now. And I see a drop. A drop from Bodexius is coming out to try and get some damage down on the island. It's a lot of Lobos, and those are generally pretty good. They're actually too close to attack that. They take out that... Was that a radar? I think that was a radar, but th this navy from Balfour is close enough, and but they don't even get to kill a single mech before the navy takes them out, so another excellent response from Balfour to the drop from Bodexius. Now... Looking at matters, T2HQ, T2HQ, or but good sight, now have T2 naval production. And obviously that's going to be very important. Destros first will surely be the order of the day, because with navies this size on the field, both teams are going to need to try and get some level of naval control before they start taking out any actual bases with cruiser missile fire, but Balfon is getting the tactical missile on his comm, which is going to be pretty epic for mech sniping here if he just walks down into the water, supported by his submarines, and snipes out a few of probably Bodexius's mechs. And he's also sending a drop. 
Where's that drop coming? It comes around the right side. If he just lands here, then he will be able to do an immense amount of mech's damage. But he's being too greedy. He's been seen. And boom! Down goes the drop without doing any damage. So, both teams on the ball when it comes to naval defence. Ah! Good sight didn't have T2 Navy at the time we spoke, though he does now, but he was the only player to go for T2 Air. And so when this first destroyer comes in from Carl, we can see the torpedo bombers from Good sight are going to be on hand to see them off. And Carl has a wave of subs to block them from just walking in and smacking up all of this eco damage. And he's going to see them off. He's probably going to be able to snipe out this destroyer before it does too much. I hope, for his sake. Still, two mechs is down, is he... Oh, three mechs is down. But down goes the destroyer. Speaking of mechs is down, how's Eco doing? Well, Core Team are ahead, presumably thanks to this continued damage that they've been inflicting on good sight and uh, d though that said both Balfour and, and Carl are ahead of both good sight and Bodexius and so they're 25 eco ahead which when you're both below 100 when both teams are below 100 eco is pretty significant let's have a look at their balance Balfour good amount of power perhaps too much although I suppose he needs it to build the TMLs and a reasonable mass balance S Carl looking very well balanced there I like that good sight short on power he's having to rely sometimes on his friend and no storage but this is also quite nice with his reclaim and production to keep that on track and Bodexi is spending the most a little bit of power overflow but also no storage so overall though Reasonable eco from everyone. I quite like it. And I see the first TML coming in from Balfour's com and boom, it smacks out a tasty mex. But Carl also has a missile cruiser. In comes another missile from Balfour. Is that going to hit another mex and so down with Dexius eco even more? Why, yes, yes, it is. And this missile cruiser, oh, well, that's actually gone out of position. It's tried to come and hide from Good Sight's forces behind this navy, but Bodexius has just brought his navy in to sideswipe the cruiser. Nice move. And down goes the cruiser, and we have Destros from both Good Sight and Bodexius sandwiching this navy. And unless Balfour can do something about it, I think he's going to lose a lot of this force. There is another Destro coming in, but what's he going to do if he's already lost this force? And neither of the Destros for the hot team in this attack have yet taken much damage. They could actually push quite significantly here. Balfour has stopped his missile work to build a T2 torp launcher, and a T2 torp launcher could defend pretty well. <clears throat> but it's also very expensive I think that in terms of actual efficiency T2 torp launchers are among the worst defensive units available in the game and Gesight's forces are being held back but Gesight has brought in another Destro Balfour is being pretty bold here just working on this torp launch which is not yet half done and he loses his last Destro in this attack we now have three Destros against none and sure the subs will help out but if they see the com, then Hot Team could just come in for the kill at this point, and that would be an amazing win for them. They've seen it, they've pung it. At least they've pung the torpedo launcher, and they've seen the com. Balfour, my dude, you have a torp, a torp, a TML. He fires the TML, what's he targeting? Huh. He might just be targeting another mech, so he's got the torp launcher up, but it just immediately dies, and on he goes. Let's have a quick check to see what that TML shot was. Oh, we saw it on the minimap there. It just took out a single T1 naval yard. And Balfour is under fire and might not escape this 
Because if he stays in the water, there was surplus. And if he comes out of the water, there's death to a fire. And he's just standing there and taking it, getting reclaimed for his friend before he explodes. Nope, he, he tried to run at the last minute, but up he goes in fire and smoke and all of that sort of thing. And we are now two to one. Good sight and Bodexius gagging up on poor old Carl, who is all on his own. That said, Carl does to have a better eco than Hot Team combined. But how long will that last? Because without the com for for Balfon, and is he going to be able to stop this naval force coming in? Because he's not actually started any production at the T2 naval factory there, and that means that he's going to have quite a problem stopping no fewer than three, four, five death rolls rolling into the production. This could be actually pretty deadly and we can see over on this side that there are a small amount of naval force coming back to try and defend but it's still going to be a big ask because that force is smaller than the force that hot team already has in here this isn't of course Carl's only naval HQ they're both UEF they're all UEF and so his own naval HQ will allow T2 production to continue but Mex is going down, land factories are going down. They will have to focus out this force, but once that's been done, the destruction will be able to continue unabated. They're making Carr come in and take the fight. There are a few top bombs coming in, and the cruiser from the site will be very nice here. But we have a sandwiching force coming in to trap this fleet, and that's going to be nice since, of course, most Destros can only fire in one direction at once. And this is just Carr sending in what he can produce as fast as he can, rather than any sort of actual tactical sandwich. A phrase I don't believe I've ever said before. What's a tactical, uh, what, what would a tactical sandwich be if you ordered it at Subway? Or your, or Greg's maybe? Do they, they're a sandwich place, aren't they? Whatever your restaurant chain of choice is. While I was blathering about all that on the Balfour's old base, look at this. We have a drop from Carl. He has dropped bunches of Lobos, two entire transports worth, into Gatsite's main base. And he is smacking out Gatsite's T2 Mexes. And this is going to be crushing for Gatsite because suddenly he's got to worry about all the stuff in his own base. And sure, Balfour's base is also being destroyed by these actually named destroyers but car is responding with air and there aren't any cruisers in there to see them off and so good sight is moving his fleet to take on car's production meanwhile good sight defends with labs and bombers from the drop it's going to take out this radar will it move on to this t2 max it certainly should but it looks like car is worried about the micro around his com i would be in his position and so the bombers from good sight are, and these frigates that he's also bringing out are going to clear up the drop. The mechs is pung and Carl goes for it and he's brought in enough to see off good, good sight's fleet there. Will he lose the mechs though? I don't think he actually will. These guys need to either stop and destroy it or just start dodging around but no, down they go. And it looks like this one T2 mix is defended, but good site has a lot of rebuilding work to do here. Good play from Carl. So as a result of all that damage, look at that, all these mixes, this entire expansion smashed out for what used to be Belfron and is now Carl. But that epic raid against the central mixes of good site equals it even for the first time in a very long time. Let's have a look at individual car, lots of power, qu spending quite a lot of mass, but you'd expect that at this stage. Ooh, good sight, it's actually having a bit of power trouble. Do we think he's going to remedy that? Ah, and he power stores. How's Bodexius doing? 
But Brodexius isn't giving him anything. Brodexius is on the breadline. So hopefully they're going to build something nice. There we go. And that's going to overflow to the site and get him just about... Ooh, maybe not. He's spending a lot. We'll have to check on them later though because I see some action going down. Specifically, I see a raid from Gutsite heading in towards Kar's main base. He's trying to repay the favour, but instead of going for a drop, he's just going for naval bombardment with a destroyer from the sea. A cruiser backing this up, as opposed to naval bombardment from where? Where else do you get naval bombardment other than from the sea? Either way, a cruiser here would be great for Gutsite, but... Even so, there are a couple of mexes in range for this destroyer, and he'll be able to do some damage. Tactical missile defense is going up, but that would work if this was cruiser fire. It's not. It's destros, and Carl sends one destro against two plus a, another fleet. That's not going to be super great for this Destro, but we have shield boats coming out over here, and shield boats are an excellent part of the UEF Navy, no other Navy gets them, and he will be able to use those to his advantage if nobody else has thought to build them, and I don't think we've seen any from Gutsite or Bodexius yet. On the other side, though, we have a beachhead for Gutsite, who has dropped NGs over here. He's try he tries to drop them back here, but Carl has a cruiser which shoots down the transport. However, these factories have been levelled up straight to Tech 2 and they are producing Riptides. So Riptide raiding could be great around here, easily pick off those and then maybe come across to hit the land mixes in Balfron's old base. On this side, the destroyers from site aren't really ranging that much more and they, they have turned their attention at least one of them has to this force but thanks to the shield boat I think they're going to be seen off so that is a good response from Carl going for that shield boat and it's going to pay from the looks of things how are those riptides doing well the first few have been killed but there are more coming out all the time and these engineers are assisting it pretty hard as Bodexius is building up a navy presumably to try and push back in to the strait in between the island and the mainland once again the riptide raid is finishing off the couple of remaining mexes on this island and thanks to the positioning of these units torpedo bombers of course cannot hurt riptides which hover i think they're going to get across over here and be able to pick up a couple of mexes without any interruption big raid from gutite comes out and it easily smashes aside. I say it easy, smashes aside. This destroyer does it. It's chasing it. And Gutsite is in the water here, trapped on an upgrade. The, the destroyer probably won't be able to take him out. Those torpedo bombers might though. Gutsite might have to move unless those torpedo bombers are dealt with pretty quickly. But no, he's been saved, I think. Those Riptides have taken out both these mechs and are going on into the back. They could come and hit this mech, which is on an upgrade, and it will be an amazing pickup for... for Gasite, if he was able to kill it. But now an air wing has come in to defend the torpedo bombers and Gutsite has been forced to cancel his T3 upgrade and head for the land. Is one torpedo, two torpedo bombers enough to catch him? I don't think they are. I think Gutsite is going to make it safely onto the land. And indeed he does. Meanwhile the navy from Gutsite is heading back up north.
nice lot of Destros out, and this is our only subs now. There's Destros just run past the subs because Sight is on the shoreline, and he's putting up rail guns to defend from the torpedo bombers, but now it's not the torpedo bombers he has to worry about, it's the Destros. If he goes into the water, the Destros have torps. If he stays above the water, the Destros have those gigantic cannons. And good sight is definitely in trouble. And he only got one railgun up, so the top bombers come back in again to double down on the attack. And good sight is deep, deep into the red. Boom! So Carl, after that early loss of his ally and having his eco smashed to pieces, oh look at that! That mech did go down. These riptides are still alive, and riptides over here from Bodexius are taking out the air HQ and these vexes so Carl is now in a bit of a pickle despite having killed Gatsite the other team's higher rated player Carl has only half the eco of Bodexius at the moment and that could be crippling especially in a naval game because boats cost so much mass but he's pushing in with destroyers as hard as he can still half the eco is not a problem that will go away easily and these riptides are still here there is some pinging going down from good sight saying get those riptides in there and if they can take out another t2 mechs that would be particularly brutal for poor old carl is there any way he can come back from this t1 bombers are a good answer to the riptides who have three vets each but one of them goes down and the riptides aren't dodging so I'm pretty sure that this other one is going to go down in pretty short order too before another mix is lost and indeed it is but there are more riptides coming in over here and Carl has sent his comm in person to deal with them he's also sent a couple of destroyers and a couple of frigates and this combined firepower should not have too much difficulty in dealing with this force. Carl doesn't have any actual upgrades on his comm. I was wondering if he had T2 or T3 and would be able to quickly rebuild these bases, but as it is, he's just two T1 engineers and a gun. And he's not using the gun, he's staying underwater. Maybe he's thinking that Bodexius would try to snipe him here in his naval yard and so he's just sneaking away somewhere and that doesn't like where Bodexius is attacking because this is quite a big force that Bodexius is sending across however Bodexius isn't bringing in any shield bolts and we saw had the shield bolt making an excellent difference for Carl not so long ago against Gatsite's raid will that shield bolt or rather will that new shield bolt also make the difference as Bodexius comes charging in with a fleet Carl's navy retreats into defence. Big wave of scouts nicely being split ordered coming out from Bodexius. Is he going to push the attack? I feel like Bodexius could have pushed that attack and he didn't. And Carl's eco is catching up but only slowly. There's still a 40 difference and 40 is is a lot. 40 is when both um, teams are still below 140, feels like a... Ha! Huh, and Bodexius is no longer below 100. Cars back to only half of Bodexius's eco. So Bodexius has to turn this into a win quickly before Carl has a chance to rebuild and slash or keep Carl off his friend's old expansion. And looks like Bodexius is going for it right here. He's sending a wave of engies in to set up... Well, what's he planning to set up? Are we going to see an NG reclaim war here? Understandably, it looks like Carl's attention... Oh, yes, no, Carl's attention might have been elsewhere, but he still tries to get up a reclaim. However, he's now more interested in picking up the wrecks of these boats than he is in stopping this construction. But... If this construction is not stopped, 
Then we're going to have a point defense that will see off all his engines, and I think that Bojaxius is going to get that down. Indeed, he does. That mix is going down. If these engines come any nearer, they're going to be taken down. NG reclaim war of game, but this one is going in favor of Bojaxius, at least to start with. And while we've been focusing on those couple of NGs having a little scrap, we have this immense naval battle going down. Carl has six destroyers in the cruiser, which is pretty nice. There's only two destroyers in there and two cruisers for Bodexius, but he's got a lot of subs in support, and Carl is actually driving him back. Meanwhile, Carl sends out a wave of bombers. And Carl's reclaim must be amazing. Yes, it is. Look at that. Carl is. 8,000 reclaim ahead of Bodexius, which explains why he's actually still got the mass lead in terms of mass collected, despite the fact that Bodexius is now 120 to 53 eco ahead. That is immense. This naval battle, though, is also going to be immense because Carl is focusing on just destroyer after destroyer, and the more balanced navy from Bodexius just can't handle it. Meanwhile, Carl drops. He's dropping just straight up Lobos onto the island, and that might take out a few of Bodexius' and Mexes, but Bodexius has a destroyer over here who is going to be able to spec them up, and sure, that's all well and good, but this destroyer should be over here fighting this lot before it does any significant damage. Again, Carl has dropped in the base. Sorry for not seeing that one coming in. And again, Bodexius and Mexes are being cleared up. Will this help level the eco difference? Turrets going up for Bodexius, and that'll clear it up. But he's lost a decent amount of eco, and now the eco difference is only 20, so lovely recovery from Carl. And Carl is slowly rebuilding over here. He's getting the reclaim, he's getting the mexes. There's still a couple of T2 engineers. What can Bodexius do with these engineers that will be useful? A land factory, maybe, to reproduce those riptides and keep raiding here, keep making a mess of things. But Bodexius has to worry about this, because his comm is actually remarkably undefended, and that is still a lot of destroyers, with more still coming in. Could Bodexius have made quite a misstep here? If he loses his naval HQ, that means no more destroyers, and that actually, no, he does still that HQ f that he inherited from the site. So it doesn't mean no more destroyers, but it certainly means no more destroyers right here, and Bodexius, my dude, your comm is just in the water, what are you going to do about this? You're under torpedo fire from a bunch of destroyers. And if you come out onto the land, you'll be under destroyer fire, so the same destroyer trap from car that caught with sighting craft might be about to catch Bodexius as well. If so, this is going to be an amazing comeback for Carl. Bodexius puts up AT-1 torpedo launcher. Well, that's nothing, and also it's the only thing above the ground, so it immediately gets just blasted to pieces by a bunch of destros. And Bodexius is just not moving. Why are you not moving, my dude? He's trying to reclaim the naval factory, but that doesn't seem like what he needs to be doing. What he needs to be doing is not standing where a bunch of destroyers are shooting him. My dude, are you aware that if you die, you lose the game? If you die in the game, you lose the game in real life? Doesn't have quite the same ring to it, and good ground fire from those destroyers, because Bojexius is only a teensy bit under the water, and those shots are going to be doing damage to him. He's into the red, and he's... And he just says GG. Boom! Bodexius dies, and despite being 2 to 1 eco down, 2 and more at several points, despite being the first to lose his teammate, Carl comes back from that terrific disadvantage to win the game. What a game, my dudes. Oh, Carl brings it back with raiding, with excellent naval play, and despite the raiding from Bodexius and Gatite, he takes it. Were well, Hot Team just too careless with their comms, because both of them died, two destroyer raids being up front with nothing in support and nowhere to go. Tell me what you thought in the comments below. While you're down there, please don't forget to like, subscribe and obey. I'm the Commissar and I will see you next time.